Located behind me in the Leopardstown area of Dublin are the headquarters of Vodafone Ireland, the network operator I'm going to be talking about today. I will be focusing on the company's mobile network, which I have been following for many years now, having produced a video about it, in fact, several years ago. But in that time, quite a lot has changed. Back in 2018, when I filmed that video, peak modernity in their network was LTE on 800 MHz and 1800 MHz. But clearly with the advent of additional spectrum becoming available and subsequent 5G launch, this, at least in some areas, has changed significantly. The highest capacity Vodafone Island site I have come across is located at Custom House Harbour and is actually right behind me on one of the rooftops there. This site has low band 4G on 700MHz and 800MHz as well as 44R high band 4G on 1800 and 2100MHz. This is in addition to massive MIMO N78 5G as well. And of course it has 2G and 3G too. I've got the device here locked to just band 28, 700 megahertz. And we can see that performance from that is all right. But to get the big numbers, unlocking and doing carrier aggregation is where the fun is. So we now have triple carrier aggregation and you can see we're getting about 260, 270 megabits per second on the downlink. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get 5G roaming to work and Vodafone Island do not offer a pay-as-you-go route to access 5G, so I haven't been able to assess the actual 5G offer sites in the, in the city that, that have it. The harbour area is in fact the best place for high-end Vodafone Island sites with a nearby rooftop having much the same configuration as this last one but without the 5G installed yet. In fact, a quick walk across the river and we can see this site on top of a Hilton. And in fact, this one has delivered the highest throughput I've seen off any of these with a peak of about 350 megabits per second downlink. Now, it doesn't sound all that impressive, but considering it's 2x2 MIMO on band 1 plus band 3 plus band 20, that is very decent bits per hertz per stream. Some of you watching this video who know Vodafone Island Spectrum Holdings will possibly be wondering why some of their spectrum that they could be using for 4G on these isn't being used for it, and therefore what it is being used for. So Vodafone Island have 2x25 MHz of 1800 MHz spectrum, of which 2x20 MHz is readily used for 4G as we've seen quite a lot so far through this video. The remaining 2x5 MHz usage varies. In Dublin, especially in the central area, I've typically found it being used for GSM 2G, especially around sites which are high band only and therefore to provide 2G to that area, GSM on 1800 MHz has to be used. However, I have also spotted the 2x5 MHz being used for 4G, although I think only around the main airport. In the case of 2100 MHz, 2x10 MHz is increasingly being used for 4G, as we've seen on, on these, with the remaining 2x5 MHz being occupied by a single 3G carrier. Again, this is useful for the high band only sites, which obviously do not have 3G 900 megahertz. It has been reported that the 2x10 megahertz or 2100 megahertz, which I've typically seen as 4G, is also in use as 5G in place of probably DSS. Having shown the flagship sites and spoken a bit about Spectrum, you're probably mostly wanting to know what the typical deployment in cities and more rural places is. In densely loaded places like central Dublin, GSM is on 900 megahertz as well as 1800 megahertz as I alluded to earlier, 
with 3G on 900 megahertz and 2100 megahertz. And then for 4G, it varies a lot. So across much of central Dublin, you predominantly find yourself on 1800 megahertz 4G, 2x20 megahertz. And that is both because of the extensive microcell deployment, as well as the fact that a lot of the macro sites, the only 4G they radiate is on 1800 megahertz. A reasonable number of the city macros do also have 800 megahertz 4G as well though. Fortunately, Vodafone appear to be undertaking something of a radio and network upgrade at the moment. This upgrade appears in different forms. Some sites get a high band radio swap, which brings 4T4R to 1800 megahertz, and then brings 2100 megahertz 4G for the first time, including with 4T4R to it. There is also a low band radio swap process as well, where sites get new low band radios. This enables firstly 700 megahertz 4G, but also, if the site didn't have it before, 800 megahertz 4G as well. Now, what about rural areas? Well, once you leave the urban sprawl, 800 megahertz 4G becomes the mainstay with 1800 megahertz 4G being around in, in busier areas. Very rurally, it's not uncommon for sites not to have any 4G at all, with 2G and 3G being the order of the day if you head way off the beaten track but like with cities radio swaps and upgrades are going on and some sites are getting very significant upgrade works what matters most though is how well it all performs and the simple answer to that is actually surprisingly well it's very rare to get poor 4g throughput on Vodafone Island it's generally a consistent, very reasonable double digit throughput, which is more than adequate for pretty much everything. Thanks for watching this quick video about Vodafone Island. I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope it's been useful, and perhaps I'll see you on the next one.